Hi, I'm Rafael Coelho. Uh, today, I'm co-founder of Our Fun Galleries um, in Newark, New Jersey. I am also creative director of Out Agency in Newark, New Jersey as well. So Our Fun's mission is to, one, activate any vacant spaces in the city, two, give artists, whether they're up and coming or established artists, an opportunity to showcase their work here in the city. And as an artist myself, being able to uh, go somewhere and the doors are open and the walls are available and people are willing to work with you whether you just started or not, um, it's just a blessing to be able to do that. It all really started with a simple call for artists back in 2013. I had just moved into the city and that was my way of, let me connect with the folks here, right? So that branched off into one, three, five shows later, and in five years, we decided to become a 501c3. We have an unbelievable roster of artists that we work with, and they're people that we have established relationships with, and it's been great to be part of their journey as they just grow as a creative. Um, it's just wonderful to be able to co-create with so many talented people. So, I was a bullied kid, like a lot of us uh, when I was younger, um, being the only Latino in my class and being teased about being gay, even though I didn't even know what gay was, it was just a very difficult thing for me. Art was always my escape. Like some people are the class clown. I was just like, I'm gonna stick to being the artist. No one's gonna mess with me if I'm good. I want them to be a part of my team. I want my things to be the most exciting painting. So just adapting kind of that structure, even like as I'm older, has been the way that I see art as like a safe haven, a safe space for me. I always wanna make sure that my platform with the arts is inclusive. So as a face for the gallery, as a Latino and as an, a gay man, I always want to make myself accessible to creatives, whether it be at events or through social media. I want them to see themselves in me, have some kind of relation. Okay, this is another LGBTQ person. Just breaking that barrier help, helps a lot of young people. Anyone that wants to show their work, it's so nerve wracking. If you're a creative, you're gonna get judged. Like who wants to get judged and, and put against other people that you think are better than you, but it's your right to show that light, to show that talent, right? And maybe it's the little psychic in me that I can pick up a young creative that may be nervous and it's just something in me that tugs and I'm going to connect with them. And I'm going to help them however way I can. I'm gonna provide, uh, you know, tips and lessons that I may not have known at that age. I just want for them to realize that their work is worth showcasing, that their talent means something. It, it takes one person, right, to believe in you. Um, and as a, an artist, if you get one collector, I mean, at least you're making that coin. It just takes one person. And I want to be that person for some folks, right? Just to know that I believe in you, I believe in the work. Whatever form of art, whether it be paintings, photography, drawings, it's it's an extension of that artist, right? It's their story. And it resonates to everyone differently. To me, there's an artist in everyone. I, I mean, think about when you were five years old scribbling around, like you just wanted to color. And somewhere along the way, people started judging you. And then that kind of fizzled away for a lot of folks. And even through my work, when I do paint and sip classes or something like that, it's just great to see that light bulb, to see someone after an hour of them painting, they create something, right? So I think everyone innately is creative, but you don't need to be a creative to appreciate someone's story. What better way to learn about a topic, a community, uh, uh, an issue that's affecting everyone than through the arts? So just even going to your gallery, supporting your local artists, that's key in helping them grow and helping them in their journey and, and just solidifying the fact that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. For those who are creators and artists, you know that this is a labor of love. <laughs> you literally have to die to be rich or, or be, you know, Beyonce's best friend. But, you know, we don't all have that luck. It's a tough road, but any support goes a very, very long way.
Hi, I'm Gabriel Van Aus, President and CEO of the New Jersey Symphony. I've been here at the New Jersey Symphony since 2016, so that makes it six years. And before that, as you can tell from my accent, I'm an Australian and I was living in London. So growing up, I played violin and piano, and for me, I was always a youth orchestra kid, and so a lot of my friends, even to this day, came about because I was playing music with them, and it was a way for me to connect with people and grow and learn, and I had all these amazing opportunities through my time as a musician. So music is always an outlet. It's a soundtrack to our lives. Music has a way of impacting you emotionally as well as intellectually. When I think about times in my life that have been really special, music is always there, whether it's a certain song that jogs a memory or too many times listening to She Used To Be Mine from Waitress when you're having a bad day. Uh, <laughs> you know, music is always there. At least for me, it helps frame my thinking. It inspires me when I'm in a bad mood. You can definitely put on an album and not be in a bad mood. It's very hard to listen to Lizzo and be in a bad mood. It's a universality as well because you're able to connect with people through music that you otherwise wouldn't have any other connections with. Whether it's pop music or classical music or orchestral music or solo, whatever it is, or a singer, um, you know, there's always something to talk about. It gives you a connection with people because everyone has a different reaction to the music that you're hearing. And by finding a commonality through the music, you're able to connect with people that you otherwise might not have a connection with. At the Symphony, we try to create a safe space for everyone to come and enjoy and engage with art. We're trying to create collaborations across art forms, so no matter who you are and what the background you come from, there's something for everyone at the Symphony. And we want to make sure that we welcome all voices, whether it's on stage or in the audience. I've had this question asked of me a couple of times, like what, what advice do you give to LGBT plus youth? How did you get to be in the position that you are in? And it's really trite and I hate saying it, but being in an environment that allows you to be yourself and then in turn being yourself is the ultimate thing. Because for me, I don't have the energy to put on a persona that is someone else to satisfy other people around me. But if you can find uh, a place to work, a place to create, a place to be yourself where you don't have to expend the energy into code switching or conforming to other people's wills, you can put that energy into being creative, into being successful. I've been lucky in my career to find myself in places where my energy and my authenticity matched the environments where I was working in, which meant I could put all of that energy into driving ideas forward and being creative because to me ultimately that sense of authenticity is what drives us all and so finding your tribe finding the people around you who share a similar vision that is ultimately the key for being successful and also to make sure that in your times when you're not in your tribe when people are telling you you can't do something when you don't conform with whatever the structures are around you taking stock, learning from those experiences, and understanding how you can prevent putting yourself in them again in the future, if possible. Being mindful that even at times when you feel like no one understands me or no one is around me, there are people who do understand you and are people who want to be around you. Hi, my name is Julio Roman. I am the CEO and founder of the OW Agency, located right here in the city of Newark. The OW Agency is a capacity building and technical assistance uh, organization. We help other LGBT organizations build what their programs look like, but most importantly, what their safe spaces look like. So Out of Space, Creating Safe Spaces in Unlikely Places is a book about being queer, being Latino, and growing up, searching for safe spaces. And so I created the book to talk a little bit about what my experience was growing up, queer and Latino in the city of Newark. But I also wanted to talk about the importance that creating safe spaces played in my life. For me, a safe space typically would be a physical location, four walls, a door, a place that you would typically have to travel to. But out of space and my messaging and what I do is all about taking the concept of safe space outside of a physical location 
and really taking a moment to look at ourselves as safe spaces in the world. It's about helping folks understand that you represent a safe space in any location that you go into. For me, I've always been a big, avid reader. So even as a young kid growing up on the South Side of Newark in the Stella Wright Projects, it wasn't always an easy experience to get through, but I always found myself escaping in books and I've always found myself loving to read. And so you always saw me at the North Public Library and have always been an avid reader. Being Puerto Rican, there's a huge cultural connection to the music that we hear and that we have heard growing up. In my family, we've listened to all types of artists that have sung like bachata and salsa and all that amazing music. Music that oftentimes originated from the island of Puerto Rico. And so many times growing up when I would hear that music, it would bring me back to places where I was connected with my family. We were in celebration. So music always was reminiscent of a safe space for me because it tied me back not only to my identity and my tradition, but also to my family and to people that I really considered uh, to be safe spaces in my life. So I would say if you're new to the city of Newark or you're looking to explore and really identify other LGBT organizations or group, use the technology at your fingertips. Um, we have done and we have come far and in between in being able to proudly promote our services, proudly promote the LGBT centers in the city. Sometimes they may not be as visible if you're traveling through the city, but I guarantee you, if you go to Google or go online and search for an LGBTQ center in Newark, New Jersey, you will have an array of options to choose from. So you definitely have the options out there. Hyacinth, the Newark LGBT Center, North Pride. You also have the African American Office of Gay Concerns and many others. So don't be shy. Do your research and step out and come visit. As you continue your journey, being an advocate, creating safe spaces and being an ally, remember that you represent a safe space wherever you go in any space that you choose to occupy. So make sure you know those values that you want to stand for, that you want to represent. And just be clear, be bold and be your authentic self.
Uh, hey, you guys, I am Tyra Gardner, formerly known as the legendary iconic Hall of Famer herself, the queen of New Jersey, the mother of all mothers. I'm just that girl. <laughs> I'm from Jersey City. I'm grown, don't worry about my age. I'm cute in the face, thick in the waist. So, um, you know how I do. I'm also a community liaison. I'm a um, national transgender activist. You name it, mother wears all the hats. <laughs> a house mother is someone who is nurturing, who is also stern in their wants and needs of to run the house, making sure their kids are doing everything that they need to do to succeed in ballroom career and real life as well. We do agree to making sure that life is together first, rent paid, school degrees, and graduating high school, and making sure those things are set, set in place and then we worry about ballroom. Ballroom is just an extracurricular activity where the individuals who are LGBT, um, allies, anybody of the sort can come and express their talents through art. So people coming up um, having that mother figure um, for individuals who may not have the birth mothers to accept who they are or um, they was ran away from home because they couldn't be who they are or these individuals grew up without a mother um, due to whatever the situation is. Um, ballroom mothers are there to give them that sense of your mom may not be here but me as a mother figure is here to give you the love and nourishments that you need but also give you the hard sternness of a parent too so you can understand and know like okay just because I'm not your real mother I'm still gonna act like a, what a mom is supposed to be. Ballroom is just a form of art that started with honestly with uh, female figures which are like transgender women, drag queens. They would do shows and it started like that and it turned into this amazing extravagant thing with Vogue in different categories, runway, uh, face and women, um, cisgender women are involved, um, cisgender males are involved. Um, trans men, trans women. It became such a broadened thing, the elevation of ballroom. Um, it's, it's just a, a outlet to people to go and have a great time. We call it functions or balls. Um, and when I started coming to those, I was like, oh my God, I could do this, I could do that, I could do those things. So let me just come and tap into this new city. Well, I'm from Jersey City, so when we come to another part of Jersey, be like, oh, Jersey, y'all doing y'all lip. We all in Jersey. Um, but however, in Newark, it just was, you would battle people, um, you would get enemies, you would get people who are your rivals, um, you would get a family sense of uh, uh, organization where you could join their houses and be a part of their team to attack other teams. It's just a fun way just to have an outlet for people who are probably strung out on drugs, for people who are don't have a sense of family at all. That was just the outlet for us to have a kiki and have a fun. So within Ballroom, Ballroom became its own safe haven for um, LGBT people in particular to come and just be fluid and just be as flamboyant as they want to be without having the society on the outside judging them for what they're wearing, judging them for what they're doing, crazy looks like that. So when it comes down to ballroom and the beats and the, the sounds of the DJ and the music that they're playing, it just makes us feel real, you know, do 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 fear, do 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 You just, like those crashes, you just hear the tsh, you just feel the music through your body and it just sends thrills through your soul as you're like you're walking your category, whether it's runway face, performance, like you just feel the music makes the body move. Music makes the mind just calm down and just enjoy the flow of the motion of the music, of the sounds, of the beats. So music is really, really great and it's really important and it definitely provides a safe space because it allows us to go into a different trend. When you're tapping into new environments, tap into whatever agencies that are local um, in your area. You can always find someone, if not the whole agency, but someone within the agency or a new person that you're meeting, you will find a safe haven or a safe space within them. We all fear one day something is going to happen, but being able to go to a place where you can say, hey, I just need somewhere to sit down and just collect my thoughts, or I need someone to talk to, those are things that I believe that you all need to tap in and be able to do. Book the queen, she's out here in the streets, you know, doing our little ones and twos and threes and fours. Book me if y'all need me, I'm a great host. <laughs>
This is Tuxedo. He also loves music. Uh, who's your favorite artist, Tuxedo? The New Jersey Symphony? No. Have you ever heard them live? Only on Zoom. <laughs>